Again, thank you everyone for being present with me for this ultimate nature of our reality talk. And I would love to open the Q&A to whoever would like to start us off. And it would mean we treat it like a discussion too. So not just Q&A for me, but a discussion. Uh, and make sure you talk directly. Yeah, like okay, that. Okay, so you yeah. got to yeah. get pretty Everyone close. Just make sure you do that. Right. Yeah. It's not one of those. Yeah, marks. correct. All right. um, you know, a lot of times I, I do, uh, I like to hear others talk, and that helps me kind of uh, gear into what I'm thinking more. But uh, I, I don't mind jumping out first here too. I I really uh, I mean I really like what you're what you're present you know you're presenting. Uh, I think uh, um, as a post Christian atheist, I I mean this this stuff uh, to me is uh, uh, I mean I I, I uh, I'm asked many times about well you know you give up Christianity so then. What do you have to live for? You don't believe there's a God, and I, 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 I know that God, God is not a sentient being, <clears throat> and so I know that that's the first question most people have when they're non-atheists is, theists as well. You know, how do you, you know, what do you live for? And to me, th when you start looking at what you're talking about here, to me, this is where humans can expand way beyond what we've been we've been held back and 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 religion played a significant role in human evolution i i don't deny that and it and it and it still plays a role in current society i think it's uh, uh, i mean these two work for an, an organization that does great great work and i i attended a funeral uh, last week and a baptism and uh, in a Christ both in a Christian church <clears throat> and saw so one is a evangelical church uh, the the more uh, upbeat music and uh, engaging uh, younger generation and the the baptism was uh, the Catholic Church <laughs> so it, it's really profound to see the differences in their presentations. However, both of these things bring people together and, and people want to come together. And now, do I, I, I think that most people in those facilities believe every word that's said? No. Do most people that go to a church believe deeply in what's said or deeply in what's in the Bible? No. I don't believe most of them do. Most of them, I believe, the majority of them go for that piece, that community piece. They, they've developed strong, strong community and strong connection with other people. And uh, uh, I, I tend to be somebody that, that I think deeper about these things. And so I, I love this kind of thing, uh, this talk, and I, and I love that the expansion that it's given me in my life and the, in 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 thinking like this, and uh, and then seeing the limitations that were put upon me by uh, by society, which which your, every society is going to do, is going to put limitations upon us, and it it is up to us, and it's up it's been up to the great spiritual leaders of our time that have gone beyond those types of limitations. So. Uh, I think it's it's it is the next expansion into you know the great what what human beings uh, the the potential of human beings is uh, is phenomenal and I, I think you touch on this uh, uh, you know just even from the very beginning of of uh, I teach yoga and and uh, uh, I do meditation and 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 just starting out at the beginning in a visualization of here I am and here's how expansive I can be and then coming back to how how micro small I can be and, and those are the things I I focus on in meditation too I think it's you know it's because it, it's so incredible to to uh, 
you see the the power of what life is and uh, the life in me is no different than a blade of grass and uh, I just happen to be I, I think you know I, I do believe uh, other than something that's probably out in another uh, planet somewhere that we don't know of there is nothing sentient at the level that we are as human beings uh, you know, I don't want to say on the in the universe because I do believe there possibly could be something, but but we are <laughs> this. We have achieved the highest level of sentient beings, and uh, other than what we don't know of in the rest of the universe, and there is no sentient being out there pulling any strings, or there's no sentient universe that has a direction of where this universe is. It's only, it goes to that simplicity. I like that snake uh, demonstration too because it goes to that simple of a thing is that life wants to continue on and life is going to continue on regardless of we, whether we survive or not, which we are not going to survive, obviously. Um, I am not going to survive my consciousness isn't uh, so uh, eventually that will be gone and yet this life that's in me that's the same as the blade of grass that will continue in some way it has to and so thank you I thank you for the time off the line. You are your name? Alan. Alan. Alan, yeah. Alan. I am Terry. Yep. Before we started the talk, I shared with my friends, I said, I'm not quite sure if I'm floored or grounded. It seems as if it's one and the same and the flooring feels like a shock, like a, a blown away, like a, to a new level of understanding, feeling floored. Though the grounding is still being here and now and with you and us and all of it. I find myself I, I recognize that I've been born again repeatedly or several times. I think about the who I am today, hurtling life. I've recently branded myself as the hurdle life coach. 34. I think about being born as Terry, the infant, and then as my experiences through life, or those deck of cards, give me more and more identity or substance to that identity. I recall associations and milestones and benchmarks graduating high school graduating college achieving levels of success in society and and thinking about those identities in which or those labels in which were placed upon me and how I aligned with them I also recall just spiritual awakenings though beyond my name you know, beyond my brand, beyond even my gender. And walking through my faith and through my understanding of God and divine and life and baptisms, that, that outward expression of the death and resurrection, experiencing that in my life four different times being baptized and truly believing in each one of those experiences that there was a new birth and a rebirth. In this interaction, so it seems 
it feels as if I'm being born yet again. Like there is a new level of consciousness and awareness and awakeness that has come through your presentation to me. I'm grateful for this time, for this space, for this circle. It's oddly familiar that we are strangers, yet one in the same, so it seems. And so thank you, you know, for being a light and for sharing your understanding as you have seeked it out and you know, put it together and give it away. I find myself learning new things today. I heard briefly of your abilities to ask great questions. And throughout your presentation were very, very like life-changing, thought-provoking questions. Several questions. And it, it seems or it feels as if those questions were like the anchors or like that, those were the takeaways. You may get pull, be pulled away in some of the other information, but those questions were so weaved so well and really caught my attention to really want to spend time in that place, you know, pondering those thoughts. I truly appreciate your conviction to what you're certain of, what's important, our relationship with God, the divine, the source. And I appreciate your, your, your universal approach to honoring, you know, people's way to the source. You know, though I align personally as a Christian, as a believer, choosing to have faith in the story of Jesus Christ and his ability to be both man and human, I mean divine and human, I recognize, at least in my walk, that, that God or creator is bigger than my religion. And I embrace other people's and walk and way. I accept that this creator that created my Lord and my God also created this really, really big universe. <laughs> I mean really, really, really big universe. And to love life or to accept life or to see life as an interconnected web of oneness to the blade of grass to the star in the sky to the universes beyond you know that in which has not even been discovered that in which we know tells us that this place this thing is so much bigger than me it's just and so I share in the, the appreciation of the opening exercise that we went out and away and then back and inside and then to claim a oneness with all of it um, to truly really have power and authority and it's like a dominion over how far we can go or take it. I enjoyed the conversations around portals. I love that 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 piece where the you highlighted the artist in which he created something on earth that truly, you know, merged, you know, the the, the divine and the practical and the spiritual and the theoretical and, and so it seemed that there was a teleportation from visioning from from observing that piece of art I think the words were you said artists can create portals I found it difficult to use my logical mind while listening to you present 
you know, the desire to take notes as a lifelong learner and want to capture that in which is being spoken, but also being drawn so much to you subconsciously and in spirit, you know, feeling called to just absorb that in which you were sharing versus trying to capture or trap it with pen and pad and ink. And so there was a complete failure in thorough note taking but of complete confidence in the connection that was made and the awareness that was raised um, in me through you. And so for that I am grateful and for you and for this presentation and, and the eye-opening experience that I've had here um, this evening here at Zeal. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Brother. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you for sharing this experience with us tonight. I too appreciated your grounding, the facilitation of grounding at the beginning of your share. It was very helpful. I think there, was, there were only a couple of seconds where my attention diverted from what you were imparting and I was able to very quickly return to the groundedness because of your preparation so thank you for that I think that you successfully accomplished giving us something in a very simple form that lends itself to great complexity So you, you really modeled <laughs> what, you, what you preached, what you taught us. I might not be close enough with the mic. Apo apologies. Looks like you're good. Am I good? Yeah. Okay. You talk a little louder if you'd like. Yeah. I love the the clarity that you offered about the absolute necessity of an awareness of ultimate reality and namely the importance of connection with source with our divine I think it was really helpful what you shared about the deck of cards that our life is and that every second is a card and the importance of applying love to all of those <sighs> loving them all past present and future regardless of the trauma they're in and that we are we are a river we are meant to be a river in the midst of it loving it all it's very powerful so you indicated that this could be also a q a experience so I would like to ask if you would be willing to speak more to what you touched upon about the gifts, the unique gifts that people discover in their life experience. You mentioned that it is one of the paramount aspects of our life in this world is to know thyself and to discover and express the unique gifts that each individual has. So I would really like to hear you speak more to that. <sighs> I have such deep gratitude and humility and love for you all. Thank you. It's transforming for me to hear how you feel afterward. <clears throat> it's a 
great question. In a way, it takes us to the symphony that's being played and we're the painting and the ways to see what our gift is within that symphony or the painting is that whatever that gift is it's our gift that we get to bring to ourselves to our families to our communities in the world and it's not for us to take our gift and start saying that someone else's gift looks like this and immediately that comparative feeling takes away from the beauty of what the gift is and so for some the gift is being a good friend or a good family member and that's it to the gift that's it and that's a beautiful note in the symphony a beautiful melody a beautiful paint stroke and it's a different color let's call that color orange so being a good friend or good family member is in color orange and then you can juxtapose that with with solving something as complex as one of the sustainable development goals or the theory of everything and so maybe that is a blue paint stroke on the canvas or a different melody in the orchestra in the symphony and so in a sense one shooting big aiming big is incredible and it's great to inspire children to know that they can aim big yet it's also cool to say that hey this color orange where you're a friend or a good family member that's an important contribution to the painting as well as this big blue paint stroke that solves a grand challenge for our society Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should have started with the question again. The you are. Yeah, you are. Alan. Alan. Terry. I am yeah. Terry. You spoke to the warning of not to be distracted by the culture war. I appreciated that. I appreciated that short brief, quick, but clear warning not to be distracted by the culture war. I'm curious to hear you expound deeper upon that, just as I, you know, in myself, work to love thyself, know thyself, but also, you know, serve others and love people and solve problems and fix things. I definitely know myself to be called to the world, called to society in my work and my duty and my sacrifices. So I'm curious to hear more about the risk therein, being in those distractions or particularly what are those distractions and what they look like or mm. what are you referring to yeah. 
another great question. <sighs> There's this gorgeous calling for us upon birth to recommune back with source, with this divine. And there are so many distractions that get in the way of us kind of like tripping over things and like forgetting that that's actually really important to do. And everyone has their own journey of remembering that we come from source and that that needs to be a first principle and everyone has their own different ways of, of doing that process. One, one of the ways, and we were talking a bit about your mentor before we started, one of your mentors, this idea that someone can come in and maybe see one of those like obstacles that someone may be tripping over, and I can give an example of maybe one of those obstacles is like, I mean, when we wake up in the morning and when we go to bed at night, connect to that divine. Drop into your body and drop into how beautiful it is that you are alive along with so many other people on their journeys. And that when you tap into like what your journey is, every one of those decks of, of the cards in the deck and being in love with the cards of the past and in love with the fate of you, the direction of the future, that it makes it so that, I mean, the alternative is that what do we do? We're literally scrolling through a news feed when we wake up in the morning and go to bed at night. That's the alternative. So juxtapose those two things. Which one is going to make you more of a divine being? It's clear. It's a very clear answer. And it, it, and we attend to that practice when we water our own seed in our garden, it'll have fruits for us. When we don't water that seed with our spiritual practice in the morning and at night, if we surrender our essence over to algorithms and news feeds, tribalism, echo chambers, the culture wars, cognitive ease, you can't communicate a multivariate nuanced position in a tiny little post. It's really hard to do that. It's much easier to do it uh, in person and to know that it's gonna take longer for me to establish these 10 variables that some are pro, some are con, some are five different other subpoints, but that is not just a simple binary cognitive eased answer to something. So juxtaposing those two things, like the culture wars and the, the news feeds and the algorithms and doing that in the morning and when we go to bed at night versus connecting to the divine in those pristine moments, It's even more important when you have a family. Because if you're rolling over and you have a partner that's laying in the bed with you and you're rolling over and grabbing your phone, you are missing out on a critical opportunity to adore them in the morning and when you go to bed at night. And this is and this is a partner uh, that you may be starting a family with or have started a family with. Um, it may also be someone that's just close to you that, that you may be in the same uh, residence with. I'm staying here with my mother in Sioux Falls and we make it at least m at minimum a amount of adoring each other in the morning and in the evening. And that's critical. Again, that's a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, your roommate, just being appreciative at least and grateful that they are there cohabiting the same sp space. Mentioning a moment of thank you so much for teaching me about this thing that we experienced together a couple days ago. 
thank you for sharing life with me. Thank you for that meal that you cooked for us. There's just so many different ways of treating those mo moments in the morning and the evening like they are just divine, precious gifts rather than surrendering them over to culture wars. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I guess there, there's two things. Uh, number, I guess maybe the one, the first, uh, first item that uh, I have it engraved on uh, on an iPad of mine, and uh, it's a quote by Rumi, and uh, uh, I, I just uh, I haven't thought of it in a while. And um, he says, uh, "Close your eyes, fall in love, and stay there." That, that quote is just so simple. And, the, and then the second thing is your laugh. I, 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 uh, uh, I saw a video uh, of a, of a um, 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 Baba G. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Mm. He, um, and and I think I have the right name. I think if you look online, he was a yogi. And um, uh, I mean, we we hear about these yogis, and I had one of these yogis that that is one of these uh, people that uh, abused his power, um, uh, and I think maybe even continues to abuse his uh, his his status. But this man. Um, uh, there's there's uh, lots of video. The, these uh, these people from uh, the U.S. went over there. Uh, it was during the time, and and I kind of think I tracked it down through. Um, uh, you know, there's the song. Of, I always have to think of the song by the Beatles, Timothy Timothy Leary, and uh, and then uh, Ram Das. Mm -hmm. Those two uh, practice with uh, hallucinogenics out at uh, in Yale and. And uh, Timothy Leary continued his uh, his hallucinogenic uh, approach, and uh, uh, Ram Das went to um, went to uh, uh, India, and and f uh, he was he uh, he was had no intention to go there for the purpose of of uh, learning anything about himself or anything, um, and somehow he got railroaded into going to see this this guy. And uh, um, uh, and and he said he he just could not uh, he could not leave it was, and and he even had L and he he talked about he had a handful of LSD and he gave it to this guy and the guy just gulped it down <laughs> and it had no effect on this guy this uh, guru and and he is actually a different person but this baba g was somehow associated with him and so these people had gone even before uh and and videotaped this baba g guy and and there's this one video and and uh i i think it's it's one of the most profound things i've ever seen there's everything about this guy when you watch him it's this it is when people you read about presence uh, uh, one of my favorite books is Eckhart Tolle's book uh, the power of now and you read about it but but you don't you you you, you know you I read I read that book seven times in in um, while I was teaching yoga in Europe and um, and I just was like, there's something here. But and somebody, somebody actually suggested to me, to me, uh, we had yoga uh, uh, teachers that would would teach, would come to your class, and they would give you feedback afterwards. And and and, uh, and I asked her for feedback, and she said, I have one suggestion: the power of now. Read mm. that book. Mm. And and I never talked to her about it again. Uh, I but I kept reading this book and reading this book, and like, what is it that? <laughs> she wants me to get from this. But there's something in there. And uh, and then uh, I went to Augusta, Georgia, and, and I had this mentor who, um, um, uh, I think he he had this sense of presence, mm -hmm. and uh, and then it then it it hit me, and, and there there is there is nothing that can replace one on one when you're with someone. There there's nothing. Mm -hmm. And this Baba G guy, in in one of these videos I watched, uh, a woman comes up 
to ask him some real, you know, deep philosophical question. I can't think of it now. And 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 a lot of them, they would sit down and they would touch the feet of the guru and 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 uh, and things. And uh, um, uh, he a she asked the question and. And, and sometimes he would get into little uh, things with people where there would be, you could see this, uh, this mental uh, battle going on. But in this case, um, I don't know what, it, what, what, I can't recall what happened to her. I, I wish I could pull it up now because it's real short, but, but they both just started laughing. And he, and he would laugh often. This, and I don't. I don't know if you've heard of Muji. Uh, is another person a lot of people listen to, and I like what he a lot about him. He studied under this Babaji. But this guy uh, would always, at some point, be laughing, and 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 that that I think that's that's something with a guru. If your if your guru isn't laughing and 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 you're not having fun and it's all serious. I think it's a good time to, to hit and hit it and run, because that's how my the, this guy that I he, I was just there to learn yoga. I was not there to learn any spiritual stuff. It was Bikram Chaudhry is the guy's name, and uh, I went there and everybody went there to learn a physical fitness yoga, which is what America is experiencing now. And I, I I'm fine with that. I am actually even looking at possibly opening a yoga studio that is fitness driven. And I think it's okay. Uh, however, if I were to then profess myself as this guru to these people, then then that's a whole nother deal. And uh, I, so I I, I just uh, I, I I like that uh, that 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 gives me a uh, a very uh, solid sense of of where you are and your presence and your um, understanding and uh, th that you see it as it's lighthearted too it is it's 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 <laughs> you know we're not here cracking atoms but kind of we are <laughs> <laughs> laughter helps yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know that there was a question thank there, you thanks <laughs> also just what what you said full circles in the sense that there's so much of this new age spiritual awakening at times that there can be uh, deception there too and it's important to be very careful because you know yoga means union with the divine and with our and you mentioned the first quote it's a fun full circle to the very first thing that you said which was that when you close your eyes and you fall in love with that with yourself that then you don't need a guru and that whole idea of like I am not your guru is so damn true and anyone that says that they are or that they rely on one is uh, is not closing their eyes and f loving themselves and yeah yeah that I just wanted to also say that in addition to what you said thank you I think I love your expression, love yourself, because that is um, really deep, really deep. If you start thinking about this, if you close your eyes and start breathe in deep inside, think about yourself, um, go from small things as molecules to so far as universe and come back that teach us a lot, teach us um, infini infinitive extensions of ourself, and at the same time teaching us to be present. And thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know anybody. Pass it there. Pass it that way. Cause I'm wearing the the lavalier mic. I would like to ask a question. Um, <clears throat> there has been a, a way of viewing uh, and experiencing and feeling the divinity and source and God uh, 
in a way that is respectful to all's journeys. And so that word, and it's as soon as you start trying to put source or God or the divine creation into words, into our symbols, that then it's, it does no longer becomes that eternal God or source or creation. Um, yet, the one that I found so far that I think is really good that I feel like, <clears throat> uh, let's start with the word. The word is pantheism, meaning all is God. And when I was discussing that with some of my friends that have been studying the various religions, they actually said that the idea of all being God is actually present in a lot of the religions. I think, I believe confirmed it's in Hinduism, it's in um, Buddhism, it's in uh, Islam, it's in Judaism. Um, I believe it's in Christianity. Um, and I'm, I'm just like, if there is some sort of a single word that we could, like pantheism, like all is God, maybe there's a way to just galvanize people together around something like that to then elicit more friendships and cooperations around the world about what is the ultimate nature of our reality is it like an all is god and then we can be cool let's all like work on our progress of communing with that in our own unique ways let's all explore our gifts and help people with the uplifting their basic needs so that they can explore what those gifts are and so yeah, so I, I'm curious, what do you think about that pantheism, that all is God? It's new for me to hear it conceptualized in a way where it then becomes something besides God alone, creation itself, the source. <clears throat> Though I feel like its concept is one that is universal and all-inclusive, I still have a, a slight sense of reservation to even begin to find a way to conceptualize it. As you said, the, the moment you begin to try to put it into a word or religion or an understanding, it begins to take away from that in which a very it is. <laughs> and it is that about religion that I think I've seen that divides us is says that if it's not my religion therefore your consequence for not believing as I believe is this place of damnation hell turmoil left behind it's the part of religion I reject I believe that God is love and I was just speaking to this just yesterday in a presentation I was giving about accepting other people as they reintegrate back into community and love being a call to us as neighbors, as humans, as, as workers to love those in which you're reintegrating and in love I mean to accept and 
I think in religion where we begin to say, well, if you don't believe this way, then you won't be accepted. And that's where I struggle to take a position to leave anyone behind or to count anyone out mm. um, in the God that I understand mm. and the connection that I have. I have a question in that space and in that realm. I believe we'll have time to come back to it. Let's come back to it after the answer. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I'll just honor table other thoughts it. on pantheism. Is pantheism. Pantheism. Yeah. Can you table the question? Can you, mem you remember it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, right. we'll walk back there. All right. <laughs> Thoughts on pantheism? <laughs> Alan. Yes, Laura. That's a really interesting question. And a worthy challenge. And in my experience and my belief, truth is truth. And when I hear someone speak truth, I identify it as such regardless of what religion they might label themselves as or what word they would use to describe the divine, to mm -hmm. describe God. Mm -hmm. So I feel like part of uh, something, what you're getting at, can it be accomplished that there's more of a sense of unity Mm -hmm. For me, that is accomplished when names and labels are omitted. Mm. And when the truth itself is spoken and lived out, it is recognizable because the truth is evident to all, regardless of where they come from or how they were raised and what they were exposed to. Anyone who seeks the truth can find it. It is evident in all of creation. Mm -hmm. So truth such as we are all made in the image of God, what book does that come from? What faith does it come from? It doesn't matter because the truth itself resonates with the spirit that mm -hmm. hears it. Mm. So I think in omitting the labels and the names, mm -hmm. we may accomplish the goal mm. Mm -hmm. that you posed. Mm. If, if people can can think about, I'm looking beyond that label, but I value the truth. Yeah. And uh, one unifying term that I kind of feel in my heart right now is seeker. Mm. I'm a seeker of truth. That was just used recently as well for me. And I was like, wow, okay, because you're mentioning it now, which is interesting. Mm in a testimonial after an interview that used that word. So please continue with your relationship with that word. To be a seeker is not connected, I think, with any certain faith. It might resonate more with one than another. But if you're seeking, you're seeking truth and you shall find it. And that is the graciousness of the divine, the divine being. He will not, he, she, the divine will not. That love is generous enough to not withhold itself from anyone who seeks. Mm -hmm. The heart that seeks will be answered, right? And truth will be revealed to that person. It's also interesting because that's the the position in J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series of the in Quidditch, where the seeker would be the one that's constantly flying around 
trying to find the little, they leave it's the snitch. Or what was it called? Yeah, the, yeah, the little gold thing. Gold thing flying around. <laughs> so that was a seeker that was on each team that was doing that. So maybe there's also, there's so much story that all points in the same direction, yes. which is so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's ancient truth. Yeah. Ancient. Ancient since the dawn of time. Yeah. That's good. I like that. I like that. I, I, I like this microphone. It reminds me of uh, Bob Barker. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you spade and neuter your pets, everyone. Remember, he, do anybody ever watch Bob Barker on what? Price is Right? What, he had yeah. this long microphone like this. Yeah. What's your bet? One dollar. One dollar. <laughs> one dollar. One dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, if you're over, by, yeah, if you're over, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd go 50 cents. I'll yeah, go 50 cents. Sorry, I think it's yeah. 25 cents. Um, you know, uh, uh, the the word that I that I started using is inner rhythm, mm. and that's the word I I use for people because I I agree that labels and uh, and. Though, though, uh, you know, if if people do use words like God and divine, then I I I uh, I ask them, do you believe God is sentient? That's, and oftentimes I find with people that they don't they don't understand that word sentient, and so then I explain to them, God is God thinking or not thinking, and uh, sometimes they have to they have to pause and and they don't know, and and I, and a lot of times I don't think. That, that religion or uh, uh, we challenge them to it does God think is God thinking or not thinking and uh, um, I believe that God is not thinking and so uh, these I think that I, I need these were when people use the labels then I want to have is is the universe thinking is the universe sentient is it not sentient to me that's very important to know because if you know that that's the that's what I feel I've over I feel I have overcome to not seeing that there is anything sentient. I am the, the, you know, the level of we as as we know it. We're as high of level of sentient being that that exists, and it doesn't mean that the the truth that I know is any more than than a dog because I have dogs that uh, I, I sometimes sit and meditate with dogs and I am just uh, profoundly moved at uh, their at inner rhythm their inner rhythm <laughs> and I, I, I and, and, and it goes back to what you were talking about is you know try to f listen to your heart and um, and if and, and and so this I guess you know uh, so you don't mind me <laughs> taking up time here um, you know, in this time when I was being mentored and uh, and and finding this presence, uh, there there was there were very many dark days, and and uh, uh, you know they talk about Jesus having you know all this time in seven years, or and and Buddha sitting under a tree for I mean long periods, and and so I, it was very very dark, and there was one day, and and I would sit and journal. And, and there was one day, uh, it was really dark, uh, and I was very frustrated and, and really just with everything. Uh, you know, career, my marriage is probably not going to continue. Uh, I don't know if I like it where I live. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, just, it comes to that. And, and I think that, you know, sadly that, that we all, uh, and maybe it's just seekers. This is kind of what you're talking about, about the colors of paint. Maybe it is just seekers. Maybe, you know, uh, other people don't have to experience this. Uh, maybe not everybody has to experience this, but me as a seeker, I think I had to experience that darkness. Mm -hmm. And the words that came to me were the words from Paul Simon of the f first words of that song saying, uh, um, Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I just could not believe, you know, how could this darkness be a friend? Mm. And, and, uh, 
you know, just for some reason, and I hadn't listened to that song for a long, long time, but I, I just wrote that down, and I just, I just really sat with that for a long time, that he must have had a profound type of uh, an experience that, that these words, that darkness is a friend. And, and so that was when, to me, that that I saw that all the pain, I have to sit with that pain. Because once I get through and I face that pain, like you talk yeah. about every card I have to love. Mm. And once I've sat with all that pain, there's this inner rhythm, this friend that's, that's in, it's in everyone. And, and um, um, so that's, I guess that's mm. the word I, mm. I came up with. <laughs> the inner rhythm. I want to also mention there was a question that you post to people about is God sentient? There's a part of that Ouroboros theory is that there's a as simplicity evolves to complexity that the complexity becomes kind of like a big neural network that becomes then sentient. So I'm not sure if that would be the answer that an Ouroboros style of cyclical creation is in itself then sentient as it continues evolving towards complexity and realizing itself and then making more creation. So. I mean, I mean, because my, I mean, my basic, you know, I like a blade of grass. I don't think is can think beyond itself. Though, though a blade of grass can have a million different varieties. So why did that evolve like that? Uh, I mean, there is, there almost seems like what maybe what you're saying. It makes me think more about it. That there, there almost appears to be or a, a you know, a, you know, a fish that can make itself look like some other species that is not a fish or something. You know, it is, there seems to be some sentientness, sentient level, but, but as far as I think of the word sentient is that we, we, are able to, yeah, we are able to think beyond ourselves and into, you know, I can, I can think, uh, I can see outside of myself where an animal or a plant or something, I just don't, I don't believe that they can, can. But think. could God, could Source then do that? process that you're talking about it's a good question yeah it seems like it's an uh, potentially a an, like an omnipotent omnipotent omnipresent essence mm, well, well and yeah and that I mean, th this gets back to where I, I don't I don't like the word God <laughs> so much because okay. when then it becomes when when a person uses the word God it's a, and I've read the other things that have stated that that God in in ancient times oftentimes did not represent a he or she it represented like energy all that is all that, all is, is, all god. that is yeah I, I still go back to that over and over again as until i find something that can encompass uh, it greater than that uh those are if you must put words then it seems as though pantheism is a pretty decent and all encompassing. Yeah. Also yes, let's yeah, let's go yeah. Laura and then let's and then let's do the what you had tabled afterward. <laughs> so just a reflection. <clears throat> when you mentioned today that we have become gods without wisdom, mm -hmm. is it possible that other forms of life that are not as sentient as we are? are fuller in wisdom than we with our sentience are. Amen. And perhaps the divine or the source is the infinite intelligence that is in all of us. Amen. And what's the inner rhythm of those animals and plants and insects and even the, the collective essence of the entire planet as a Gaia, as a spirit. I mean, it's 
ridiculous to it seems like it's ridiculous to feel like the the inner rhythm of all of those things that we listed feels like that it is c constantly divinely connected to source without any like hiccups in a sense it just feels like it's a pristine pure connection to source there was a funny meme that i saw recently which was that there were like you know birds chirping and you know we when we like hear birds we're like ah oh, it's gorgeous <laughs> right but like it was funny because the birds when chirping and they had little like cloud bubbles of what they're saying and it was like Wake up, humans! You are enslaved! <laughs> One of the things that the birds were chirping and the guy in the bottom frame was, was like, such beautiful bird chirping noises. <laughs> so. Yes. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, also a reflection. And then uh, a thought and a final question. I hadn't been challenged in that way to think of, to be asked whether or not you know, it's God thinking or not. Uh, I typically intentionally skirt conversations around politics and religions. I intentionally strive to not take a position but only that in which is in love and that I accept you as you are where you're at and believe in where you're going and to model that in, in a hope to inspire others to live the same but as I received the question of is God thinking my initial thought and responses aligns with yours that that is and I will I'm gonna go there and to say that he is not just in my relationship with God and Mother Earth but he is not thinking however I recognize that in my thinking that and in my connection with universe and source that though God is not thinking, yet I am thinking, for sure God is still moving. And there seems to be for me that my belief tells me that there is a purpose for all things and for all of us. And that in, in the way that I've packaged it in my own walk, I, I say that man's choices doesn't change God's purpose. And so it's God thinking, no, God already has the plan. It's already written to come back to me. That is the thought, that is the plan, that is the way that the seeker would find me. And no matter what I choose to do or how I think or where I land or where I was born or which religion I identify with his thought his plan is already written and it's for you to come back to me and no matter the choices you make it doesn't change the purpose that's already written and intended and so I think in that that it still gives us the power retained that we are God-like and we can create, co-create and, and step into that that God-likeness to change things and shift things and manifest things and so I say God is moving through me, through you, mm. through us, through mm. it mm. all, through it all I want to celebrate your presentation to say that I love the pictures. I'm curious in, in my own journey as a 
broadcaster and the speaker to like the where you found such majesty and such mm. inspiration and that in which it's not urgent to share but just to say that I appreciated the visual mm. aids mm -hmm. in the journey the beautiful picture of the being and the chakras and mm -hmm. the connection and the people and it was just it was all there and to to see myself one in the same as a spiritual being having a human experience and in that for the first time in my life truly I believe Alan I was driving here celebrating my mother mm. She turned 54 today. Mm. And she is a woman of joy and laughter and acceptance. And she's celebrating 54 years today. And I recall as a child fearing to tremble the thought of her passing on the day she died. And I've had a brother who has left already and, pl and many friends and close family members who have left already. Um, I've experienced death. I know death in that way of a loved one. And as I've been journeying as of late, and as I've been connecting with others like us, to believe that death is only the beginning, a new beginning. Mm. To believe that it doesn't end. Mm. That life continues after this mm. into a space, into a dimension of all-knowingness of limitlessness of joy of love of laughter of worship and I felt myself for the first time today so it seemed that that I would celebrate the day the last day if my mother was on her last day that because of my newfound belief in where she's going that I could still be as happy for her today at 54 as I would be for her if she was at the end and then that I would wholeheartedly believe that I would see her again and be with her again you know when it became my time to then pass over and so I'm curious in your thoughts around this, what does the end look like? Life after death here, with your understanding of the source code and quantums and all these things beyond my own research and understanding. I'm curious into your beliefs on what happens after this when the shell when the heart stops. Mm. When we Beautiful die. story about your mother. Happy birthday. Thank you. Let's shout out. Shout Cynthia Liggins. Cynthia Liggins. We love you. We love Omaha, you. Nebraska. Shout out. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, also the slides yeah. as well can mention that on the way is that Just the to to aim to make the visual aid as much of a compression of that key point as possible without words, just the visual aid, and then yeah, just using the words. <clears throat> I did write the don't get distracted by culture wars. Uh, <laughs> on that slide because I was like just really wanting to hammer that one um, home but yeah I th that would probably be um, and then just simple searches on different 
um, everything from the ser classic search engine searches all the way to um, there's tons of uh, image galleries to use and yeah really just trying to compress all of the key th uh, essence of that point uh, like that one where it was like how do you bring your gifts forward or the importance of bringing gifts forward and it's just like this divine human that looks like they're beautifully communing and expressing themselves like that would be like the one that I pick and so I think I looked up for that one I think I looked up Kundalini Awakening mm. you know because it's hard to find a, an image like that and so you have to look up specific words to mm. find stuff like that so that would be another recommendation mm. um, I like saying I don't know yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love saying I don't know it's nice yeah, it does Good. seem like if everything else is like so cyclical, it's like some spiritual leader has been learning a lot from like indigenous elders and a lot of them say that spirit meets with body for school mm. and earth is school and we mm. come with our mission that we're here to bring forth, our gifts that we're here to bring forth and have the school, all the lessons mm -hmm. that we have along that way. Mm -hmm. And that afterward we go back to source and then potentially choose to, some say it's an older spirit, one that's incarnated a lot for lessons in school. Some say there's a younger spirit. So, yeah, it's an, it's an interesting way of putting it. Yes, sometimes it's interesting thinking about like, like your own like ancestral like lineage and you like look up the tree right or like like multi generations back and then you can kind of like see like yourself carrying mm. features mm -hmm. of the tree <laughs> <laughs> from the previous ancestors and so Images. yeah yeah and mm. so yeah that's kind of a, also an interesting potential some people say that there isn't but what we don't know we don't know for example like um, i like when you say you don't know yeah because i agree if i don't know i rather to say i don't know than guess about something and give wrong impression um we existing and coming back in reincarnation that is something what we don't know. You don't know because you did not experience this. Um, I didn't experience this and probably nobody experienced this. Some people do mm, say that they yeah. have experienced it. It's quite interesting. That's quite interesting, but that is about feeling, how they feel about this. Um, and this is where science and spirituality yes, kind of meet. That's kind of, that's me, but how you can say for sure if you've been already here, if you walk through different body, you know, and experience this life. I think that is really philosophical and really technical too. At the same time, um, I agree with term probably, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good way to put. Do you guys have um, thoughts on? I, I guess I'd have one. Uh, one thought on. Um, uh, I, I mean, I I think that it's 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 so much more important for you to live now. Mm -hmm. When you when in in my in my view, I know there's I know there's nothing when I'm done. There is absolutely nothing, and I have, and and you know this goes back to you know I've I've sat with the darkest uh, in me, and so I I know that it, it can get no darker than that, and and so therefore, when there's nothing, there, there's nothing. So now I need to do as much as I can, and um, 
one one thought that came to me is uh, you know in but this is where religion has worked well though in like in in uh, uh, you look at uh, 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 the um, uh, I'm, I'm uh, losing uh, the 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 guy uh, in uh, uh, over across next. The China has uh, pushed him out. Uh, uh, the, why can't I think of uh, the, the the Buddhist gentleman that uh, uh, has been booted out of China? The Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama. Yeah, and uh, I mean you look at that child when he you know he was found and they said well there's you know this is the next Dalai Lama and so this child you know how this child was raised and, and just imagine if we raised every child like the Dalai Lama but they don't they don't do that I mean they they have they, they were not very they were the most of the people in in that area were not treated very well uh, even prior to the Chinese coming the Dalai Lama now he got you know he he got treated uh, tremendously well and uh, uh, and 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 I think why you know if we could take those types of examples and use them I mean if every child was raised like the Dalai Lama I mean Wow! Just imagine where we would be. I mean, he is the most content and happy and and cheerful uh, person that uh, one of, one of the most. He's a, a person that laughs a lot too. I, I like him in that sense. But mm -hmm. uh, um, we have to also be slightly careful because then all of the paint strokes are like green. Then, if all of the children yeah, are if raised. everybody is raised, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like both uh, interesting to unlock their spiritual connection and gifts but also yeah the same methodology uh -huh. for that but, but I guess I mean my maybe not the exact same methodology but the fact that he was he was raised as as the next coming of God basically uh, is how you're raised when you're the Dalai Lama and so what if we raised every child that they I mean with that spirit that you are versus uh, you know, which which we're ver we're all very familiar with the Catholic Church that says you know you and you have sinned, and the, in the older days I, I lived across the street from children that went to the Catholic Church and and uh, you know they had to dress a certain way their parents were extremely strict on them they were beaten oftentimes and uh, I mean how did they you know when you have a child. A child that's so beautiful and has so much, and there we have so much to learn from them, and yet they're sinners that we've got to beat the sin out. I mean, that's how it used to be. I mean, they're not. I don't think the Catholics are quite that way anymore. But uh, that's how it was when I was a child. And uh, I mean, I just think we're. I think we're getting closer and closer. I think children. You know, people talk about helicopter parents and all this, and in a sense, that's a good thing, though. I mean, parents are involved. When I was a child, uh, you know, come home and uh, uh, here's a little bit, go outside, and and I was raised by the neighborhood. Uh, I was raised by my older brother, and my older brother was not a kind person. You know, he was kind of a jerk. <laughs> so. <laughs> extension what you say I think that's really important to be present in this life and be in full potential of you of yourself realize all your potential because you don't know what will be next you don't know what will be if will be something else besides this life things like you say every day take every day as your last day and ran as full potential as you can enjoy your life mm -hmm. as you present and like try to be happy too I think that's really important I think people losing happiness lately uh, we don't know anymore how to be happy how to accept life and be happy be happy for all self, be happy for all our family, be happy for all our kids. Uh, treat your kids with happiness and try to um, grow, the, um, grow them up as happiest person too. Because um, 
kids right now is kind of being themselves more with electronic, with technology and everything else. I think we're losing touch, we're losing to be in contact with our own kids, with this exponential, you know, technology. I think we needed to more be connected, be connected with family, be connected with source, be connected. That's really important. Some of the spiritual leaders that we've interviewed in that I frequently visit their teachings they speak to the exponential technology transition as a grand challenge that society has to figure out how to handle because there's this beautiful biological capacity for us to be a channel and anchor the divine in us biologically and it happens so much by just having the things that we've been mentioning in this conversation working on on those things yet we've externalized so much to of our time and essence to technology and the the as of like appendages of our being that you can you can actually like you can physically sense your own stress levels when you're behind a keyboard versus talking to someone in person and and you're much less likely to do any sort of harm to someone else in person than you are to say something behind a, a keyboard and just one more step further with what they have taught me is that if we're not careful with this whole transhumanist transition that we're going through that we basically make ourselves able to be manipulated and influenced at unprecedented rates. Because once you have a neural prosthetic in you, you can be mind controlled. And you gotta be got to be really 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 wise and aware and collaborative and loving and compassionate and have a deep connection with source especially like if you look at all of the is what 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 they're selling is they're selling you you not needing to have the bandwidth limitation of pressing fingers on computer keyboards but rather literally your thought can lead to creation and so when my creativity is not limited to that bandwidth but instead I can just be thinking and creating and arranging and building well I can have so much more potential so that's kind of there the the pitch for it but we do need to be very very spiritually wise and graduated from kindergarten um, prior to unleashing such technologies that have speeds of democratization that are unprecedented and also it's a complicated transition to the exponential technologies and sometimes it feels like some of us including including me and even younger people than me that are 15 and 5 that do they even know the capacity of their biology for closing their eyes and loving what's there because when you're born with it and you've never had time without it which we all had time without it because we were born in the times prior to the devices so that's one of the big question marks and a lot of people just say adapt they're just like oh just adapt like if you know if the child is 
doing it a certain way, just adapt to how they're doing it and whatnot. Which there's some truth to that, but there's also this nuance of like, People forgetting communication channels. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. You just said that people are forgetting communication channels. It's just like there's just one. Probably there's yeah. just there's just one other um, thought on that subject, which is that I I love children and I want to see children find their gifts fast and children finding their gifts fast has a lot to do with them having their basic needs met and being exposed to a bunch of different things for them to figure out what they what is their gift yeah. yet so many kids around the world are not having their basic needs met and are not being exposed to this wide array of options and so some of the promises of these exponential technologies are that if you solve the theory of everything, then we will begin to eradicate all of the uh, poverty and malevolences that exist, and we will achieve all of the sustainable development goals. And so it's, it's an interesting multivariate conversation. Yes, please. You had something. You had the mic. I had something. Well, Mike, you inspire me so much. By the things that you say, you just trigger things for me. And um, one thing that you inspired me to share was that my stepdad told all of us, his kids, that he knew that there was nothing after he passes away. And there is no one, he, he died when he was 53, and I was 35. There is no one we've ever known who has been so close to us even after he's passed away than him. So most of my siblings got tattoos in honor of him. We talk about him regularly miss him think of him he he is present with us somehow and i just found it so ironic that he was so adamant that there is no god and that there is nothing after and yet he lives so strongly so be careful what you say <laughs> you never know because love is what endures. And one thing that he did was every moment with every person being this very demonstrative love and it didn't leave the hundreds of people that he touched. We're still saying people's names and talking about people that were dead thousand years ago. It's kind of interesting how the presence of that sticks around too, yeah. Like the ancestry that you were the talking ancestry. about, the lineage, how you see your mom is absolutely gonna be with you. Mm -hmm. Like, Yeah, especially after so much time passed together. Um, yeah. My mom has said the same thing. Like, I'm away. I don't know. Yeah. You're, I'm she's in you. In, yes, yes. It even feels like that sometimes being uh, in different cities when you're literally uh, on other sides of the planet or that you can tap into the, through that collective web, mm. you can tap in to what feels like the presence of my mother, mm. although we are thousands of miles away from each other, or what can be like, you can tap into someone that has existed even a long time ago and tap into their teachings and what, and be like, it feels like I'm ch almost channeling what mm. 
they their who they are and their essence for a little bit. So timeless. Timeless. I recall feeling that certainty one moment looking into my children's eyes. I have two sons, one daughter, six, fifteen, and nineteen. And and with the time shared and the lessons shared and the wisdom shared, uh, I was confident that I would live beyond me, that I would still be living though I was not present in this body. Mm. Like I am but my wisdom mm. and my lessons mm. and my experiences. I, I am a story. Yes. And my story would continue to be shared and my personality would still shine through my daughter, you know, through the biology, through the divine yeah. biology and the creation of all and the way it works that, that though I am not here, I am still here through her, mm -hmm. through him, and through him, and that I am not dead but alive. Interesting. So the transmissions that you pass to your children, and you do your children, etc., are evident in their moment-to-moment -moment life as well as in what they continue passing down even long after we're gone. Mm -hmm. So it's as though then, out of all of those hundred billion people that built this incredible civilization that we now live in, they are all present through all of the lineage of transmitting all of the collective knowledge over time of all that we have now. feeling Excited. yeah likewise <sighs> how do we feel about the discussion do we feel like there are any other thoughts that we want to share We start talking about uh, technology, kids, and everything else. Extension of this conversation is like um, now is technology get you can modify, you know, like what you wanted in kids, like more mass knowledge or something through genetic building engineering. genetic engineering. This one is, I think, totally wrong. You are changing um, creation of identity of your child. What is, you know, only supposed to be your child and you modifying this through generics, to, you know, to addition something to um, well, question would be if they were to be born with a very serious disease or ailment and you chose to not engineer that away, then was there a lesson to come in and experience that ailment and then we engineered it away so they weren't able to have that lesson Yeah, but they talking about engineering like most smarter kids, like basically engineering, you know, a kid who will be already not as much as your kid, that will be something what is artificial changed, built, basically. So th this conversation that we're having right now, in 100 years, will they be having this conversation or will it just be such a normal I thing? I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes it feels like if we just project the trajectory out a couple decades or a century and we just say that they'll be looking back and saying that yeah, why like were you even that's having will be normal. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very normalized. That's the trajectory. And same with another really obvious one is like clean meat. P 
people are slaughtering billions of animals on the planet and in the future it will be like I can't believe you're doing that here's clean meat grown in bioreactors thumbs up and another one is that you right now it's I don't know I I'm not ready for clean meat yet. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> an, 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 another another one is uh, children looking back and saying that I can't believe that you were burning fossil fuels at such unprecedented rates and and putting the planet into such ecological potential catastrophe and so to to again to transition to fu to transition to fusion at faster rates again this is one of the most uh paramount things is again is for the sustainable development goals for the theory of everything in physics to figure out how to do what happens in the sun on our planet in as safe and as energy efficient circumstances as possible can unleash a whole new era of abundance and energy where everyone can have any amount of energy anytime they want and it's all clean and yeah but that can also draw us back too yeah there's there's ways to the handle it it would say yeah that is um, you know, development of energy resources. That's a basic, you know, um, progress in our lives. And by limitation of this and, you know, limitation of fossil fuel, that can be limitation and drawback to. Yeah. One you know, uh, I guess one thing that I, I uh, think of is that you, so how long how long have you been in San Francisco? Then did you? Since I was nineteen, so seven years. Seven years. Yeah, and you know, hearing you talk uh, about certain things, I mean, these are things I've kind of thought about too. But you know, in flyover country here, <laughs> I don't think you you know you. Or with the people you're interviewing there too, I imagine. I haven't looked at all your interviews, but this is a conversation. Like even I've never thought of uh, you know this other thing that you talked about about basically implanting some kind of a. Yeah. I mean, I've not uh, I've not thought or, or read or talked about that in flyover country here at all. And when you brought that up, I was like, oh my God, yeah, that is. I can see that is gonna ha that's gonna happen is it's a, yeah why not just have something implanted in you so you don't have to type you just think it and it yes. goes but yet yeah, eventually that can be a control mechanism mm -hmm. so you know uh, living out, living out there uh, seven years is all and, uh, and and I mean you've interviewed just it looks like hundreds of people yes. right and yes. uh, uh, um, and then seeing what's happening and, and the progression of things the way it's moving um, yeah um, it, it has to feel so I think you know, this is one of the things I've said. Uh, if, if if Donald Trump gets in to office again, I'm probably I, I'm aiming towards going somewhere more liberal and within the United States or out because I just I I'm sick of you know I'm sick of fighting him and then I got to fight a governor here too and I just don't know how much of it I can put up with. It. I'm you know I'm I'm volu I'm doing as much as I can. I volunteer up at the prison. I teach some yoga and stuff. But you know I just really don't know. <laughs> I want to be. I want to be where people are. And so, to to in some degree, I would guess that you you know you're in a bubble out there, and in Oregon is kind of the same. I've yeah. met people in Bo Oregon and stuff. It is actually one of the crazy things about that bubble is not only what you were saying about how we can do things like be at the edge of society's knowledge about how to jam chips into people's brains and other people around the world are not talking about that even in the middle of the United States not talking about that let alone people that don't have basic needs around the world but then there's how ironically people in Silicon Valley have some of the least amount of conversations about source about God about the divine about creation some of the least only r really recently with this whole idea of being in a simulation has there been more and more ideas about okay let's revisit God or the divine or creation but really there's a lack of ethicists there's a lack of moral scientists there's a lack of philosophers there's a lack of of, of people that study theology there's a lack of all of those disciplines 
within every single one of the major tech companies in Silicon Valley, also the major tech companies in China. There's just a serious lack. You have people that are making AI that are mostly white guys in Silicon Valley or white or Chinese men in China. And there's a lack of, again, lack of female perspective, a lack of mm -hmm. just philosophies from around the world. Um, and I think it's becoming more and more clear that if you do not have ethicists, philosophers, moral scientists, spiritual leaders that are within those tech companies around the world, that's going to be the recipe for disaster. And, and, yeah. and just one, you know, one interesting thing I, I add to this is, uh, you know, when I studied uh, yoga, uh, you've heard of the book, by the biography of a yogi, uh, of Yogananda. Mm. Um, he he came into the United States and first he went to I think it was New York to the east east coast, and he w he was he was like these people, there is, there there is nothing I can do, do yeah. with these people. So he flew to California, from what I understand, I, and I, I I may be kind of fuzzy on some things, but he decided that's where I'm going to go and try to establish a yoga. Uh, uh, a foundation, and uh, there he found okay. I can uh, this uh, these people I can deal with, and he still had a problem there in that that people uh, he had some people that he was training, and they ended up having sexual relations with people's wives and things, and it turned into a big tumultuous thing. And he went back to India, and he w he was intending to not come back. He's like that is some messed up stuff over there, but he did come back. But it, I think it's it's fascinating that you're saying you know there's none of this happening there, and that is the bed of where a lot of this yoga existed and and mm -hmm. uh, uh, there needs developed. To be more. And needs to be more. And it, yeah. and it it came across that way where we were thinking the East Coast was in such bad shape, and and it was like or he was or he was like so. There was a recent movie in the, the in the twelve where they had the twelve different indigenous tribes from around the world come together at the United Nations to help put up a, a calling to spirit to guide the trajectory of our planet in a more benevolent direction and yeah. one of the tribes was in a cab going from the airport into Manhattan and they said in their language and it got translated obviously in the subtitles but they said there are no trees mm. when they're driving into Manhattan and yeah, when you just have a, a massive concrete jungle, again, you can't, you can't, it's, hard, it's so hard. It's not like you, there's, you don't go to the cave because again, you need to bring your connection to the divine and your gifts forward. If you're in the cave, you're not bringing the gifts to other people. But you go into Manhattan or any actually really metropolis nowadays, because they're like, I believe it's over 50% of people in civilization live in metropolises now. And they're all concrete jungles. Even though some have a higher density of parks, like cool, but they're still concrete jungles. And you can't successfully tune yourself to the divine like a tuning fork when you're constantly bombarded mm. by EMF, cars, humans, wow. economy that's roaring around you. Wow. One of the things you guys have in Sioux Falls is fantastic is you have a lot more uh, space. spread space. It's just, it is, and, it, and you have your own like grass that you can lay in uh, <laughs> in the sunlight. You know, you can actually go out and open your deck door and go look at the full moon can't when you're crammed into the little boxes that are all on top of each other next to yesterday. other boxes. <laughs> we just did that yesterday. Look at the full moon. If you want to tune yourself like a tuning fork to the divine, we, we must redesign our living situations mm. around the planet away from concrete jungles and towards arcology, which mixes together architecture and ecology. Yeah. And yeah, mm. yeah that's, 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 that's a big one. Only thing I haven't mentioned from my page, and I'll speak to, but I want to say thank you for the direction, um, a call to discipline to dip into my body mm. um, during the time, during during divine times, you know, in the morning, the evening, at night, um, a call to discipline more so than just to, um, you know, a, de a devotion to a word or 
any other thing besides you know that in which is inside of me you know and but I, I also recall the the gift of, of leaving my body and going mm. um, far 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 away um, and then coming back but I appreciate truly the 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 reminder the encouragement the call to discipline um, to dip into my body and go into that space and to love it and so I wanted to thank you for that for that for that call to discipline thank you yeah what I hadn't mentioned was if we don't repair then we repeat yeah and I do subscribe to this way of life that says it is a it is a classroom um, and that that everything is a lesson yeah. And that that I am here because uh, of lessons I n need to learn and haven't yeah. learned yet, <laughs> yeah. and and it actually allows for me to embrace um, the hard times, yes. um, that in which the the, the the deepest lessons are learned, or the yes. most rich lessons are learned. You know, yes. people in you know business sense will say you know embrace failures and all these different things that coach you and mm. call you to embrace the fall. Um, because of what you learn while you're down and I've seen so many downs in my life growing up in the inner city drugs violence and gangs everywhere a lot of criminality um, my own you know experiences with incarceration and reentry and I have learned the most through those setbacks mm. uh, I've, I've become better and stronger because of the process of the comeback yeah and as I continue to embrace again another mantra of mine personally that life is not wins and losses but life is wins and lessons <laughs> and that I am here to learn as many lessons as I can and everyone that I'm learning I it was meant for me to experience and so I look forward to the time in which I leave and don't have to come back <laughs> and that I just exist <laughs> not here but there and i'm able to just be in the all-knowing and the all-present and in the mm -hmm. the everlasting flow of all of it and just to watch m myself and other versions and forms um, learning lessons along the way and so i celebrate this time as terry liggins and then 34 and start in a starting a business and just fi learning so many things along the way the value of mentorship new friendships yes. and just the lessons you learn along the way but I subscribe to life being a classroom and that I'm here to learn how our worldview profoundly changes when we see everything as lessons everything everything even when we do something as simple as we're like moving a little too fast instead of kind of flowing a little more spiritually as we're moving mm. and we like stub our toe or we hit our head or we do something like that that's literally a lesson like slow down <laughs> it's just it's everywhere all of those lessons are everywhere yeah it's a school and even yeah. the smallest tiny synchronicities are are lessons everything yeah. Someone's calling you out to, even though sometimes it can feel like someone's like projecting their shit on you. Yeah. Uh, if if you can also tap in at the same time of like, whoa, what are they actually trying to like teach me right mm -hmm. now? What is this teaching me? Yeah. 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 That that activation in body is a call to learning. You know, we're experiencing it together, and we're both going and growing through something. It's not just happening to them or me. It's mm. happening to us. Love it. And whatever the experience is, even though it may seem as if I am on the the the, the short the short side of it, um, you know, anger. If something angers me, what is that about? You know, if something irritates me. Irritation, agitation, frustration. That's a call to learning. Yes. All those things are a call to learning. It, it is grateful to experience bliss and joy and laughter. But when you find yourself irritated, agitated, aggravated, it, it is a call to learning for yourself. And, and when you get 
consumed by wanting to change that in which was already called to teach you. My friend, one of the one of the uh, preachers I followed, the guy, what's his name, Furtick, he said he said sometimes you're. It's your opposition that shows up, but it's truly an opportunity. Ah, mm -hmm. yep. Opposition knocks on the door and you think that, why the hell are, are you, you here? here? You know, what the hell's going on? It's an opportunity yeah. for you both, yeah. which is so interesting, like yeah. you said, too. For opportunity. Both that, for both them and for yourself to both learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all of it, from all of it. So, so cool. it caused me to embrace those pains, those dark places that I've been, that I know. The roots have to reach down to hell sometimes for the leaves and fruit to reach the heavens. Amen. Praise God. I am grateful. I am so grateful. <laughs> the, this, sec, this discussion and Q&A portion has been so damn good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So fire. I've been loving it. I've been loving it. Some of the best stuff comes from the interplay of the spirits afterward. So I love it. Yeah. It's good. Any, any, any thoughts? So when we talk about concern of what will happen to youth and, and what will come of the future with the developments of technology that supersede our wisdom, it is it is possible that in the process of destroying ourselves we will come to our senses <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> and already the mental health profession points to mindfulness and and it's possible that as wisdom infiltrates as source has its own energy and power, perhaps. Mindfulness apps, you know, there, there may be things that then counter that destruction mm -hmm. as we realize that we can not survive as only thinking beings, but we need that spiritual yes. component mm -hmm. in life. Yes. I think perhaps we put maybe too much stock at times in, into thinking Mm-hmm. Mm. Rather than feeling, the spirituality, for sure. Does the divine source think maybe not as significant as acknowledging that the divine is knowledge and wisdom mm. in and of itself? Mm -hmm. And our thinking doesn't necessarily get us there either. Beautiful. But it is the receiving of truth that taps into the eternal truth. Ooh. And, yeah. yeah. When we look again at the, the stack of cards that is our life, and Terry talks about being born again tonight, yes. I'm reminded that we are born again now. Moment to moment. And now. Yeah. And now every moment and as we receive what truth is right now, rather than thinking, thinking, we receive what we mm. are learning mm. Mm. from each other and through these experiences and through whatever pain or discomfort is teaching us. We are more one with the need to not even think at all. Yeah. yeah. But we are part of the knowing and the truth itself with every moment, every moment, every moment. And regardless of what technology does, we will find ourselves needing to focus on the fact that we are human beings and, and who we, it's, it's about what, it's about the being, you know, and if the source is the I am, what we are at each moment, that taps in more than the I'm thinking, I'm doing, I'm striving. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <sighs> it's good. Thank you. Wow. You've given us 
good, good discussion. So moment to moment. We are born again every moment. Yes, and right? and there's the more that we seek towards truth, the more we see all as lessons, the more moment to moment we keep leveling up more and more towards that divine communion. Or returning to it. Returning to it. Remembering the source from whence we came, wherein is all fullness of truth. With laughter. <laughs> With laughter along, yes. Yes. Ah. And it's so important to export this feeling to the rest of our evening and tomorrow and the next day and our friends and our families and our communities and the world so to continue that as you build up more and more of those moment-to-moment -moment experiences to, to take and to be able to share the gift is critical. And it's not an, it's not an overnight r flick of the, of the light switch in that direction either. It's definitely a very slow process of being better than we were yesterday. And incrementally making those improvements. More than more than we were. And, and just more. By calling for more, seeking out more. Yeah. yeah. I think about the gift they're in in showing up. There was a call, there was an answer. Yeah. And now there's a fullness. Yes. Because of the unity. Yes. You know, take forth the unity into the evening and to tomorrow and to our families and our friends, the togetherness, the oneness, the likeness. Yeah. Yeah. The inner rhythm. The, the inner <laughs> rhythm. This was such blessing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There it is. Even closer. <laughs> So I, I uh, um, had this thought. I, I work with the Native Americans up at the uh, up at the prison, and uh, and um, I, you know I would just like to put out uh, uh, something I shared uh, to a band that was here in town recently that was thanking veterans. I would like to. I just want to thank the uh, Native people and um, uh, people that uh, were enslaved in this country and and um, that died uh, defending their homes, that defending um, their land and their way of life. And I uh, just uh, um, want to uh, acknowledge those uh, people before us. There is no greater honor than time. And no greater experience than to escape it, to leave time. I'm grateful and thankful to spend time with you, friends. Yes. You 
Use it wisely. Share it. Place it where honor is due. Those who are living out love, looking to strengthen love, to inspire love. Mike, I appreciate so much you honoring those that have gone before us in their way and in our sacrifice. Honor is due. Honor time. This was so special. <sighs> so grateful for it. It is good. So grateful. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Whew. It's good. Thank you for. It's forever. It goes for on forever. forever too. It never ends. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. 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 The connection, the time, the love. Yeah. It's never ending. Tap into the eternal flow. Yeah. yeah. It's good. This is so damn special. I would, I would like to, I'd like to thank everyone that has been tuning in for the live discussion. Oh, yeah, live? well, yeah, we've been re recording, and so yeah. it will. Yeah, we will po put it. Yeah, we will put it. It will be. It will be the whole thing. Will be up. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you, everyone, for tuning in and checking out the discussion and Q&A portion of the ultimate nature of reality. We greatly appreciate you. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the topics that we discussed. We'd love to hear from you. Have more conversations with your self, with your friends, your family, coworkers, people online about source, about bringing your gifts forward about understanding the source code. And check out the links in the bio too, everyone. Support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the organizations, the spiritual leaders that you believe in around the world. Support them, help them grow. You can find all of our links below to our PayPal, cryptocurrency, Patreon, Design Cool, Merch and Get Paid, all those links are below. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We all love you very much. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace.